Okay, we're going to look at a seven segment display and as a case study to learn about binary numbers and Boolean algebra. A seven segment display is the thing that you look at when you see a number on a digital watch or an alarm clock. So it looks like this figure that I've drawn here. So for example, if it was showing you a seven, these three segments here would be lit up. Or if it was showing you a four, these segments would be lit up. Somewhere inside the electronic device that's storing this number, it's keeping track of whatever number it is that you're looking at in binary. A binary number is a number that has one of two states. It's either on or it's off. So that gives us two possible digits. So for example, the number one is a one. The number, so that's a one. So let me just map this. This is in decimal and this is in binary. The number two, since we only have two digits available, we call this binary because there's only two digits. And our two digits are zero, one. So with only these digits available, the next largest number, a 2, is going to be a 1 followed by a 0. A 3 is then a 1 followed by a 1. Now how do we get a 4? In order to get the number 4, we actually need a whole other binary digit. So the number 4 is 1, 0, 0. And then if you just continue with that pattern, the number 5 is 101. One. Now, to write a really large number, you're not going to count all the way up. It's better to understand this a little bit. Our understanding will come from looking at powers of 2. You see, in decimals, if I was to write this, I'm writing a 1, a 2, and a 3, but you understand that to be the number 123. These are the hundreds. These are the tens. These are the ones. Now, if you think of this in terms of powers, this is the first power of 10. A 1 is actually the 0th power of 10. 10 to the 0 is 1. And 100 is 10 to the 2. The next digit over here is the thousands. But notice thousand is 10 to the 3. So the pattern is just the exponent keeps going up by 1 as you go that way. But the base is always a 10. That's how the decimal numbers you're used to work. Binary numbers are very similar. Set. In a decimal system, you have 10 possible digits, 0 through 9. In a binary system, you have two possible digits. So we always go with powers of 2. So if I write this number here, you would understand that these are the 1s. These are the 2s. These are the 4s. And these are the 8s. And to understand where that pattern comes from, think of powers of 2. This is 2 to the 1 is 2. 2 to the 0 is 1. 2 squared is 4. And the third power of 2, 2 times 2 times 2, is 8. And that just keeps going. So the next significant digit would be the 16s, the 32s, and so on. Again, they're just powers of 2. So what number are we looking at here if I was to convert that to decimal? We're looking at 8 plus 2 is 10 plus one more. So all of that is the number 11. Let's try going the other way. Let's say we have a 53. Okay, some random number, 53. That's in decimal. How do we write that in binary? Well, in binary, we've got our 1s, our 2s, our 4s, our 8s, our 16s, our 32s, and our 64s. Where did I get this list of numbers? These are powers of 2. That's 2 to the 1, 2 to the 2, 2 to the 3, to the 4, to the 5, to the 6. 
Okay, so how do I get the number 53? Well, I clearly don't need any 64s, but I must have a 32. 53 minus 32 is 21. So I need another 16. 32 plus 16 is all I've accounted for now, which is 48. So I need five more. So I don't need an eight, but I need one more at least. So what do I have now? I've got 32 plus 16 plus four. 16 plus four is 20 plus 32 is 52. I need a 53. So that means I don't need a two, but I need a one. So the decimal number 53 is the binary number 110101. Now, this seems cumbersome, why do we bother? The reason why we do this is we can convey information inside of an electronic system where a one indicates a electric circuit that is on. Circuits is on. That typically means five volts. And then a zero, the circuit, is off. So typically that zero volt. So if you have a circuit where you've got various items in it that are either on or off, you can use them being on to represent a one and being off to represent a zero. And if you do that and follow the binary number system, you can represent any number. So that brings us to the task at hand. The task at hand is how do we build a circuit that makes a seven segment display work? So we need to store a number in binary, and we can have that as switches with inputs for now. We'll, we'll learn to make a counter later. And then we have to design some electronics to decode when the various light segments come on to represent the number that we want. So to organize our problem here, we've got four inputs. Let's call them A, B, C, and D. These are the inputs. So they can just be switches for now. And if they're all off, we have the decimal number that it represents. And then we have our seven segments. So we have to display this to a person on, through, say, a digital watch or maybe an alarm clock. And our seven segments are going to be, all these are going to be on, and that middle one's going to be off. Now, let's name these segments to make talking about them a little bit easier. So, these seven segments here, we'll name them with lowercase a, b, c, d, e, f, and then that middle one is g. Okay, those are the names of our seven segments. And if all of our switches are off, we need these outer ones to come on and the middle one to be off. Then, if we are representing the number one, we want just the two on the right to come on. Remember the number two in binary, these are the, these are the ones, these are the twos, these are the fours, and these are the eights. So the number two, we have a two and no ones, that gives us a two, and a two is going to look like this. So these segments are going to come on. Okay, I'm going to do this a little bit quicker. I'm sure you're getting bored now listening to this. That's a three. And this is from something else that we're doing. So. Okay, so that's on, those are off, gives us a four. I'm going to let you do the rest of these. Well, no, I'm going to finish this up actually for you. And I will finish one of those segments. We'll do segment A, and we'll do that to completion using Boolean algebra, do the circuit design for it, and then I'll leave you to do the rest of them on your own. Okay, so that's a five. This is the number six.
is a 7. This is an 8. Now, if you're getting lost, just check here. There's one 8, gives us an 8. 4 plus 2 plus 1 gives us a 7. So our 8 has them all on. A 9 is one more than 8. Okay. So those are all the numbers we have to be able to display, 0 through 9. And we have to be able to detect them when we're given these binary numbers here. So the best way to solve this problem is to actually look at it backwards. Don't try and figure out how to get the lights on for each of these numbers. Look at it the other way. Which numbers turn on the various lights? So let's have a look at segment A. Okay, segment A. When does segment A come on? Segment A is this one right here. So if you draw this out, you'll see segment A comes on these numbers here. Okay? A Boolean algebra expression of when we get segment A. We get a segment A if we have a 0, or a 2, or a 3, or a 5, or a 6, or a 7, or an 8, or a 9. Now, there's actually a much better way than doing this explicitly, and I'll show you that. Okay, so when do we have a 0? We have a 0 if we have. Now, remember, these are your, your Boolean algebra operations. If that is A, then a line over it means not A. A beside a B means A and B. So they would be connected with an AND gate. If I were to write not A followed by B, that means not A. A has to be off and B has to be on. So not A and B and so on. So that's how I'm going to identify the various numbers as their Boolean algebraic expression as representing the various switches that have to be on to represent those numbers. So for segment A, segment A comes on if we have a zero, which is not A and not B, and not C and not D. Or if we have a two, 2 is not A and not B, and C and not B, or if we have a 3, 3 is not A, and B, not B, C and B, or if we have a 5, and a 5 is not A, B, not C, or if we have a 6, which is not A, B, C, not B. Or if we have a 7, which is not A, B, C. Or if we have an 8, which is A, not B, not C, not B. Or if we have a 9, A, not B. Okay, now this is a huge Boolean algebra, algebra expression. However, the good news is we can make it simpler by following some rules. The rules that we will use to make this simpler are, one, we'll pull out common factors. So just as you learned, I think, in grade 9 or 10, pull out common factors. Another rule that we'll use is that a number or its complement, so for example, if I have A or not A, that's always equal to a 1. And then another rule that'll make this work, that'll make things easier, is if you ever have a number and its complement, such as A and not A, 
that will always be a zero. If we use these three rules, that will that will help simplify things. What do I mean by common factors? By common factors, if you have, for example, not A and B and C or A and B and not C, notice that B is a common factor in each of those. So that's equal to B and not A and C or A and not C. And then if you further study this, you'll actually learn to identify that as an exclusive OR gate. However, don't worry about that just yet. Well, yeah, let's look at it. What that's saying is if you have not A and C, or you have A and not C, so one or the other, but not both, that's an exclusive OR. Okay. So we can directly build a circuit that encompasses all of this, but we can make our job a lot easier by doing a little bit of math. So the math that we're going to do is we're going to reduce this expression first by looking for common factors. And we can do this sort of a chunk at a time. Let's find everything that's got a not A. So I've got not A at the beginning here. So I've got not A and from my first term, not B, not C, not B, or my second term, not B, C, not B, or my third term, not B, C, and D, my fourth term, which is B, not C, and D, my fifth term, B, C, and D, and then my sixth and seventh term each have an A. So I can close that off, and I've got my sixth term, which is, so that is for A and not B, not C, and not D. Or my seventh term, which has not B, not C, and D. Okay. So, what have I done? I've taken my expression for segment A. Remember, segment A is this little segment up here. I found that segment comes on if I have a 0, a 2, a 3, a 5, a 6, a 7, an 8, or a 9. The number 0 is when all of them are off. The number 1 is when C is on and the rest are off and so on. So each of these represent the various numbers that should turn on segment A. Now following these little math rules, while well, just following that first one, I've pulled out common factors. My common factors are not A, was a common factor of all of these. Well, if I pulled it out here, I should actually erase it from that term, it should be there. And then A was a common factor of the last two terms. So this expression that I have here is the same, uh, that was not A, this expression that I have here is the same as this expression here. Just pull out a common factor. I can pull out common factors within these brackets now. Notice how I have not B and not C in both of those first two terms. So I'm going to have a couple more brackets here. I'm going to pull out not B and not C from the first two terms. And I'm going to be left with not B or, oh, and you know what, I don't have not B. I don't have not C in that second term. It's not D. So mistake there. Let me highlight these. So you, so you don't get the, the confusion I had. The first term has not B and not D. The second term has not B and not D. 
So I'm going to pull them both out as common factors. I've got not B and not D, my first two terms. What's left over is not C or C. Now when I look at the next two terms, that has a not B, that doesn't, that has a B, that has a not C, that has a C, but they both have D, and actually that last one also has a D. So out of those last three terms, I'm going to pull out their common factor, which is a D. And I'm left with not B and C, or B and not C, or B and C. Now, keep close track of your back brackets. All of these are ended with not A. And then over here, I've got A. And notice not B and not C is common in each of those. Not B and not C. And then I've got D, not D, or D. Now, we've got some rules here. See how A or not A is a 1, so that applies here. C or not C is a 1, D or not D is a 1. And then anything ended with a 1 is just itself. So we could call that rule 4, 1 and A is simply A, whatever A was. So now I've got not A and not B and D. And 1, because not C or C, that's a 1. So I can just write a 1 in there. Or, now this one, there's actually a trick, but I don't want to throw that trick at you right now. We'll, we'll have a couple extra steps, because I don't want to confuse you by throwing more rules at you than this right now. So we have for D and not B, C, or B and not C, or B. So, well, this is this is simply going to turn into or. Actually, yeah, I will apply. I'll apply these rules a couple times and turn that into B or C. We'll do that on the next line. Another bracket because all of this is attached to the not A. Or on this side we have A and not B and not C, and then we have not D or D. So I'm just going to go not D or D is a 1. Again, rule 2. Okay. Now let's make things a little bit simpler. We've got not A, and so here we have not B and D and 1. We can just ignore the 1 not B and D, or we've got D and, well, let's pull out our common factor of B from the last two. So I've got not B and C, or B and not C, or C. And here I've got A and not B and not C. All right, so now I've got A and A is not A, not B and D or B and, well, I'll be able to pull D out as a common factor of, of each of those, it looks like. Okay, so over here I've got, where did my not D go? Oh, that's supposed to be a not D. I didn't copy it properly from here. See, that was not B and not D. That's not B and not D. That's not B and not D. Please fix that. Look in your notes and fix that. I apologize. That's not B and not D. Or we have D and we've got not B. And C, 
or B and not C or C. Well, not C or C is just a one. So this becomes not B and C or B and one. Or A and not B and not C. So what did I do there? I said that not C or C is equal to 1. And that's one of my rules here. Not A or A is equal to 1. So again, that's just going to be B. So I've got not A and not B and not B or B and not B and C or B. Now there's actually another trick here. This becomes B or C. I really don't want to throw a, a fifth rule at you right now. So if you if you go and learn that, you'll be able to get it even simpler than I have it here. However, for now we're just gonna leave it like that. Sometimes it's better to, to do a fewer things in the first in the first go. Okay, so what have I done? I found that segment A should come on if we have switch A off, switch B and D off, or B on, B off, and C on, or if B is on. Or if A is on, B is off, and C is off. If we have any of these cases, then that segment A should be on. So what does that look like? Let's organize. We've got switches A, B, C, and D. So I'm going to make a line, a wire for each of those, A, B, C, and D. And then because I'm often going to need it, I'll put a NOT gate here. So that makes this line NOT A. This line, not B. This line, not C. And this line is not B. So if this line is A, this is not A, that's B, that's not B, that's C, that's not C, that's B, and that's not B. I can label them here, I guess. Not A, not B, not C. Not B. All right. Now, segment A. When is segment A going to come on? Segment A should come on if we have not A, so this is not A, and and what? And this thing here in the brackets. So if we have not A and we have not B and not D, so let's take not B and not D. That's what this is here. And if you think you might get lost, just label these. This is, and you should be able to trace it back, not B and not D. Or, so we'll have an OR gate. or D, and, so I've got D, this is D, and not B and C or B. So let's move that over a little bit. So this is D and not B and C. So this is not B and C. I'll draw that line so you can see they're not connected. This is not B and C or B. So B is here, and that goes into an OR gate. There you go. Now, there, we could have done another Boolean algebra step and made that a little bit better. However, 
yeah, we're limiting the rules that we're applying here just to make it a bit more clear. So now what do I have on this line? I have D and not B and C. Or D. So this is D and not B and C or B. That's what's on this line. And I need that or not B and not D, which is here. So I'll run this wire there. So this is now not B and not D or D and not B and C or B. And that gets ended with not A. So that wire doesn't need to drop down there. You just run it across. Or I need A and not B and not C. So that'll be easier. This is A. And this is not B. That's A and not B. And this is not C. So I have one or the other. Now we're done. So this again is my or A and not B and not C, I believe. Let's just trace it back. That is A and not B and not C. So this circuit here will turn on A when it's supposed to be on. So let's go to our simulator and verify that. All right, so over to circuit verse. And let's figure out which one of these is going to give us segment A. So let me just temporarily, I'm going to guess it's that one. Nope. It's that one there. This, seg this segment here, the third from the left is segment A. Okay, so that's the one we're designing right now, the third from the left. So let me move that over to here. Put a wire on that to remind us. So we're going to wire up this one. And to keep things simpler, we'll get long line straight down of A. So that's A. That's B. We'll label all these in a second. That is C. That's D. And because we're going to need them, let's get our NOT gate out. And so that is NOT A. That's NOT B. That's NOT C. And that's NOT D. So I think I'm just going to label A, B, and C. Yeah, do that later. Oh, yeah, I just want text. Here we go. A. C and D. And this over here, this is our segment lowercase a. All right. So now we want to build a circuit such that this light comes on when we have all of them off. So notice 
when D is off, not D comes on. That's how that not gate works. When C is off, not C comes on, and so on and so forth. So let's start building this here. So we've got, well, we'll start there. We've got an OR gate attached to A. So let's move it, we'll move it over a little bit here. Make sure there's plenty of space. Yeah, you don't want see these little wires here that are connecting those pins. You don't want them there. You want to get rid of them. So my output, and make sure you grab the seven segment display, not the hex. Okay. So this is pin A right here. Okay. So we want an OR gate attached directly to pin A. So I'm going to grab both of the gates. I'm going to put an OR gate right there. Okay. And then we want an AND gate fed into that OR gate. You have two AND gates fed into that OR gate. One up top. And then the other one much lower. So do I know this is going to work? What you do is you need to trust yourself. So you trust yourself going from the math to your logic diagram, and then you trust your logic diagram is right when you go to build it on a simulator. So we've got an AND gate here, an AND gate here, and another AND gate being fed into it. That connected. There we go. Okay. Now, into this AND gate, we have an OR gate, which is being fed by two AND gates. And we have NOT A. All right, so let's attach the NOT A. And I'll, I'll run the wire up here to make room. So that's my not A. So I've got not A and an OR gate. So let me grab an OR gate. And that OR gate is being fed by two more AND gates. And those two AND gates, well, the top one is not B and not D. Not B. And not D. And the gate below is being fed by D. And this terminal is connected to an OR gate. Okay, this OR gate is connected to an AND gate. And that AND gate has NOT B and C. So that's this part right here, NOT B and C. Or B. So we have the or B, so this has to be connected to B. 
So that's B or, let me see that again. It is not B and, so let me grab an AND gate, not B. and C. Now this bottom gate has not B and A. Not B and A. Okay, so we should be done. Now we can test this. When they're all off, that's the number zero, and that top light is on. When we have a one, it's off, as it should be off if there's a one. If we have a two, remember zero, zero, one, zero is a two, that segment is on as it should be, look. If we have here we are, if we have the number two, so we have A is off, B is off, C is on, D is off. We have the number two, that segment should be on. So it's, it's this table we're checking against here. A three, it should be on. A four, it should be off. There we go. So if B is on and the others are off, that's a four and it's off. A five, it should come back on. A six, it should be on. Uh, why are we missing a six? A seven, it should be on. And then finally an eight, it should be on. And a nine, it should be on. Okay, so we're missing the eight and the nine. So let me look here. Our eight and our nine are that's eight and that's nine. They're the two cases where A is on. So they turn into or A and not B and not C. Let's just check that. So do I have or oh. I'm missing a, a line here. So that's or A and not B and not C. So not C has to go into this AND gate. See how there's a wire missing? That is not C. So don't panic if it doesn't work out perfectly. Just go back. Trust that your work was done correctly and, and you can find it. See in this case the number is 8 and nine were not working. So we go back to our math and we find eight and nine are here. You see eight is this one here. Nine is that one there. Eight is A and not B and not C and not D. Nine is A and not B and not C and D. So they were easy to find here. This is our eight and this is our nine. So then it's just a matter of following our math to see what happened to those terms. They went here, turned into this, which turned into this part of our circuit here. And on our final one, I was just missing that wire there. So we've got it now. And this segment here works correctly for all of the numbers from 0 through 9. So it comes off when there's a 1, and it comes off when there's a 4. Now, we could have saved a ton of work, and there's a shortcut way, and I'll show you that shortcut in a second. Just give you a minute to pause that, see that you've got this correct, and it's going to be your job to figure out and add circuitry here. So just extend these wires down and then have branches that go to these other segments so that the correct full number shows up. So what you're going to do is 
draw these lines farther down. So that's your A, your not A, your B, and so on. And you're going to have more branches, and your branches, if this is a branch, your branches will connect to segments B, C, D, on, sorry, just trying to move this around, to all of these segments here. You're going to have branches that properly attach to those segments that you're going to design by doing the same process as I did, and get that number to fully display. Now, there's a little trick we could have used. And if you're done, you're done. That's fine. If you want to learn the little trick that will save a ton of time, I'll show you now. See, when I look at all of this, see how segment A comes on if I've got 0, 2, 3, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I could really say, as long as I have anything but 1 or 4. So instead of doing all of this, I could have just said A is not 1 or 1. Now remember the number 1. So A is not, and not is a line over it. And the number 1 is not A, not B, and not C, and D. Or the number four is not A and B and not C and not D. So if we do a little bit of Boolean algebra, let's start at the inside. So I've got not, I've got common factors of not A, not C, and then I've got not B and D or B and not D. This is exclusive OR. Uh, we, we could go over the math of it, but let's not. Let's reason it out. Not B and D. So that's saying just D or B and not D. So just D or just B. If I have just D or I have just B, then this thing should come on. But not both and not neither. That's exclusive OR. So this is B exclusively OR B. And a common way of, of writing that out is an OR gate with a circle around it. So that's not official Boolean algebra, but electrical engineers will use that all the time. Just quicker, easier. So that means B exclusively OR D and not A and not C. All of that is in a not D. Now, there's also De Morgan's theorem, which turns that into not A or C. So that's another little trick. So if you're staying on for this sort of add-on, you might want to learn De Morgan's theorem. You can look that up. It might be De Mauvrier. I'm not good with names. It's De M something. I'm calling it De Morgan. De Morgan's theorem. And that is that not A and not C is the same as not A or C. So you get rid of 1D, basically. So I've got not A or C. So my whole thing is not A or C, ended with B exclusively or D, and then the entire thing is inverted. So I can go and say that if I've got A, B, C, and D, and my little segment A there, I've got a NOT gate. And before that NOT gate is an AND gate. And again, I don't expect everyone to follow this, but if you, if you choose to stick on ahead, learn a little more advanced Boolean algebra to, to simplify your circuitry. I've got not, and then here I've got B exclusively or D, so I've got an exclusive or gate there. That'll be B exclusively or D. So 
So you're going to see a little more math becomes a lot less circuit drawing. And so this AND gate is that AND there. A nor C, so not A or C. So I've got like a, a nor gate. A or C. So let's try this out. So I've taken all of that crazy amount of work and it looks like I've turned it into, let's go to circuit first here, and I've turned it into just a couple of gates here, a nor, an XOR, an AND, and a NOT. So let's try that. So I've got a nor, an XOR, an AND, and a NOT. So it's actually even an AND gate. Looks like I'm I'm down to three gates. Yeah, I'm just using an AND gate there. Okay, so my seven segments. I'm going to attach segment A to my NAND gate, and then my NAND gate is getting the NOR gate and the exclusive OR gate. The NOR gate is getting A and C. So let's just get our, our inputs here. They are A, B, C, and D. And that NOR gate is getting A, C. And then the XOR gate is getting the other two. What I recall, I could be wrong, I'll, I'll recheck it. My XOR gate is getting the other two, yeah. So now let's test this. Zero, that segment is on. A one, and it's off. A four, and it's off. And if we try all of the other numbers, that's a seven, that's a six. Well, let's, let's do these in order. So one, it's off. Two, it's on. Three, it's on. Four, it's off. Five, it's on. Six it is on, seven it is on, eight it is on, nine it is on. So yeah, a little more math and a whole lot less circuit design. So to recap, we're designing a seven segment display decoder, which is going to take the binary numbers, zero through nine, and our electronic circuit is going to find when the correct numbers show up to turn on the correct segments. You have seven segments to design, of which I've designed one of them. I designed it twice. I designed it sort of the direct obvious way, using Boolean algebra and finding all the numbers that turn it on. And then I showed you a little shortcut. I said, well, let's find all the numbers that turn it off and then just put a NOT gate at the very end of it. So this was finding all of the numbers that turn that segment on. And then it was much less work because it turned out there's fewer combinations that turn that segment off. So with this particular segment, you really should find the ones that turn it off. Some of the other ones, if it ends up being 50-50, it really doesn't matter which way you pick. It will all work out. Just be patient and remember, you will make some mistakes because there are a lot of wires involved. I made a mistake, I missed a wire. When you do, just relax, trust yourself, have a look at your math, go back from the beginning, see if you can follow the number to the segment that represents the number of your math. I guess you what you call the Boolean algebraic term if you want to be fancy. And then make sure that your math is all correct, following these rules to simplify it. And if you are a bit intimidated by the math, I will do another video showing you a more direct way of doing this. It's going to be a lot more wires and circuits. However, it, it's going to be, it'll involve way less Boolean algebra manipulating. So if you find this hard to follow and you want something that may take longer but is easier to follow, then just watch that and I'll link to that video below. Okay, so best of luck to you guys, and good luck working on your seven-segment display.